In this video, we're going to learn to build out curves in 3D in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we are going to talk about generating curves in 3D for complex surfaces. Now, in this series so far, we've talked about the loft tool, the patch tool, We've looked at different ways in which we can compare the quality of the surface, but ultimately if you're using surfacing tools, you're probably working with open contours, so you're not creating a complete closed solid volume, and you're probably trying to create some complex shapes. So I thought it was fitting that the next video that we did was talking about how we can actually generate those curves in 3D. Now this is something I have covered before in a series I started and abandoned, but I really wanted to just put it in this series to make sure that we understand the process. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Ferrari 308, and this is something that we modeled in forms. If you wanna learn how to model that in forms, you can certainly check out that series. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this as our basis to create curves in 3D. Now you can go to the description of the video and download the data set, which has these blueprints set up for you. What we're gonna do is get started by first creating a sketch on the side, and we're gonna look at the shape of the fender from the side. Now, this is an important consideration because there's a couple design decisions that we have to make at this stage. When we're creating curves in 3D, the most efficient way that I found is to project 2D curves out until they intersect in 3D. This means that we need to be extremely mindful of the start and end of those curves and the direction in which we're modeling them. For something like a front fender, we have a good view from the side and we have a good view from the top. We can see all the geometry that we need to see here. However, if we look at the design from the front, you can see that we are going to be missing a portion of it. I'm gonna hide the back for now so it's not obscured. And what we see here is that we can only see to the crest or the top position above the wheel. When we look at it from the side, as soon as that curve starts to taper back down, we can no longer see that geometry from the front. So this is important because this means that we really need to think about the direction of our sketches. So for us, we're gonna go from the side and the top. Then we need to think about how much of the curve we're drawing. With surfaces, it's often easier for us to overbuild the surfaces and trim them back. It's gonna be a much cleaner approach than if we make them too small and we have to extend them. So keep in mind that we can always go back and we can trim these surfaces, but when you're building a model like this, you generally aren't hoping for it to be able to update very easily. So we're gonna get started with a spline, and I'm gonna be using fit point splines for this example, simply because the control points will be directly on the curve. That means it's a little bit easier for us to visualize these when we're looking at a blueprint. So I'm gonna start ahead of the front here. Now keep in mind that, again, the fender sort of rolls here, and we're gonna move this back in just a second, and I'm gonna do two curves here. I'm gonna do one curve that just goes to the base of the A pillar, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna take a look at doing the entire side. So I'm gonna hit escape to get off my spline tool, and then I'm gonna begin manipulating these handles. You can see just by moving the rear handle that we get pretty close. I'm gonna select the spline and turn on my curvature combs. I've got my density set to about 50, and the scale you can see here is 0.33. You can increase or decrease these. It doesn't really matter, but sometimes increasing the density can visually help. So when we're looking at this, what I want to see is any areas where we're expecting a large change in curvature. So for example, the top of the fender here, we would wanna see a bit of a longer line on the curvature comb and anywhere that it starts to flatten out, we would wanna see somewhat a consistent curve. What we don't wanna see is going to be a drastic change in curvature or an inflection point. This means that we're going from convex to concave here. So I'm gonna do Control Z to do, and I, I like the way that that curve looks, so I am going to be happy with that. I'm gonna finish the sketch. I'm gonna hide the sketch temporarily because I wanna show the same process, overbuilding it for the entire car, and how this is a potentially more complicated problem. Whenever I'm planning out surfaces, I am going to stop anywhere that the curvature changes direction. So for this, we're essentially looking at a big arc, but then it arcs back up, and eventually it, it sort of dips back down at the back or levels out. This is a much harder spline for us to control, and we generally don't want to use interior handles to control the spline because the curvature gets a bit messy. So if I start pulling this front edge here, you can see what's happening if I turn on curvature combs. 
we're starting to see this inflection point, which we would expect to see right around the A pillar or right around the sale window or the triangle window. We would expect to see it around here. So it means I might need to move this point around. And then you can see at the back, we're seeing a, a rapid increase in the radius of curvature, but it's going the wrong direction. It actually needs, this back curve here actually needs to curve up. And what we end up having is again, that inflection point and we're having this center section here where we're sort of flattening out. We're going from conve excuse me, convex to concave. And uh, that might be an okay result. The curve might be fine, but it's going to be less ideal because it's much harder for us to control that by using those handles on the end. And it's not going to yield the same quality of results. We're gonna have potential surface issues where we get spikes in those curvature areas. So ultimately what I try to do is I try to build out my sketches so that I'm looking at a single direction of curvature. And once again, what that means is anytime we go from convex to concave, I'll likely determine that that's the inflection point where I start a new surface. Now in this example, I'm actually stopping it a little bit short. I stopped it at the base of the A pillar, where in reality, I would probably take it somewhere around here. So that way I'm not looking at a, another spline that's changing direction. It's oftentimes very easy for us to look at a blueprint and think, oh, I'm gonna model the door, I'm gonna model the front fender, I'm gonna model the rear fender, and, and model it in that approach. But you have to remember that these lines where they opened or they created the gaps for the door, those aren't necessarily changes in curvature. That just happens to be where the door opening is. So it's important to try to think about the curvature or the shape rather than where the seams are. Now, there are some exceptions to that. For example, the bottom edge here, that is gonna be an exception. That's a hard line in the body. And when we look at this from the top, this is going to be the point in which the curvature starts to roll under. That's gonna be really hard to model because we don't have a good view of what that looks like, at least in this set of blueprints. Now, I do know that these cars, the shapes of them do change and vary just slightly depending on the year uh, and depending on various various factors, obviously there's aftermarket body, Liberty Walk, and the wide body kit for these cars. There's tons of different directions that you could go with the body at this point, but all the ones that I've seen have maintained this upper fender line. So that upper fender line is a pretty key part of the design aesthetics here. So now let's talk about building out the 3D curve that represents this. And for that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a top view, and we're gonna build out that same curve. I'm gonna rotate my view so we can see a little bit better. Build out the same curve here. Now, one important thing I like to do is I like to project the endpoints or the curve itself by using P on the keyboard. And then I'm gonna rotate this around, noting that it pushes it down to the base of the canvases. So you can see it down here. I'm gonna convert it to construction because we don't actually need it. And for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna draw some additional lines that aren't required but they're just going to help us visually. So I'm gonna draw a vertical line here at the front and a vertical line at the back. The process here we need to think about when we're building curves in 3D is that if we're projecting 2D curves together, we wanna to know precisely where their end points are. And that's gonna be important for us to build out the rest of the curve. So once again, I'll make these construction and then I need to drag this down where I think that the fender curve would extend to. Because remember what we're doing is we're building this curve out that's gonna represent the upper portion of this fender. We did extend it slightly past in the front so we can trim it back if needed. Now that we have these references, I'm gonna use my spline and just simply connect those two points, hit escape, and then I want to come back and create the curvature. Now, the body here is going to be relatively flat, so I'm gonna add a horizontal constraint, and then it's going to start to taper back at that point. It'll flare back out for the rear fender a little bit. But for the most part, when you look down at cars from the top, they don't have nearly as much shape as you would think. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna change the curvature so that it approximately matches the shape of the fender. Now, we have to keep in mind too that what we're doing is we're building out this line right here. And this is another common mistake. It can be very easy to lose track of what you are trying to build. But with these reference lines, it's very easy for us to just simply pull that line back up and maybe pull this line out a little bit. You can already see that we're relatively close to that shape. I wanna do a quick check on the curvature combs just to make sure that I'm not introducing a problem and it looks like I am here. So what this is telling me is that we are 
bulging out right in this area, and then we're starting to go back out the wrong direction. Now this can be fixed by increasing the weight of the back handle or decreasing the weight, depending on how your setup is. But what we wanna look for is the length of this last curvature comb, which we can't really measure. We don't want it to be longer than ones before it. We want it to be shorter because we're tapering down at the nose of this. Now it can be pretty tricky once we start to activate the second handle. You can see it's very easy for us to sort of get out of shape and it's almost impossible in this case. You can zoom in and get a little bit better resolution, but then you lose sort of the visibility of your curvature combs. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of play with it a little bit. And at any point in time, you can right click and you can deactivate the tangent handle and it'll go back to its original state. Now the original state of a spline is going to be the least amount of tension in the, in the spline. So if you activate a handle, especially at a midpoint, then you might need to select and deactivate those handles. I'm gonna to continue to run with it as is here, but just keep in mind that this does take a lot of playing around with. The next step in this process is for us to create a new sketch. It doesn't matter what plane, we're just gonna use the side plane for this example. And I'm gonna hide my canvases, go to create, project include an intersection curve. Now the intersection curve is generally between a curve and a face or a plane, but we can also use it for two separate curves. We're gonna project them together and finish our sketch. Now if we hide sketch one and two and we bring back our canvas, from the side it should look just like the curve that we had from the side. From the top, it should look just like the curve from the top. And from the front, where we didn't really have visibility of the entire fender, you can see that it's going up to the peak and then it's rolling back down. Now it is a little bit off here and it's partially based on things like the blueprint, the resolution, the position of them, the scale. There are all kinds of things that can make it be off just a little bit. And generally, we're not getting an exact replica of the geometry. That's nearly impossible to do from images and references. You're just gonna get something that's visually close. That's basically the process of creating these curves in 3D. There's a couple more things that we should consider though. Now, if we're thinking about complex surfaces, the next thing to think about is how we want to model the rest of the geometry. Now, there are a couple of schools of thought here and Generally, what I would do is I would build out the fender without the opening, without the arch. And then what, what I would do is I would come back and build that fender well and then connect them together. And the reason for that is because it's going to be very difficult with the surfacing tools that we have and in most CAD software to generate the shape that we would expect to see from the car. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a sketch on the side. I am going to project this curve, now this is projecting the 3D curve, not any of the 2D curves, and I'm gonna turn it into construction. And then once again, just for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna put some vertical reference lines in here. You don't need to have these here, you can use a vertical constraint, but I do think that it is important that we are aligning to some geometry. And these endpoints here, the front curve is gonna be really small, but I'm gonna make their bottom points horizontal with each other. And I'm gonna overbuild this a little bit. I'm gonna go past that first body line and I'm gonna just come down to this second one here. Now, just as a check, I'm gonna draw a horizontal line here and make sure that it is hitting all of that geometry. Then I wanna make sure that these vertical lines are construction because we don't need them for the projection. Next thing I'm gonna do is replicate that from the top, just like we did before. Now you'll find that certain areas of cars will be very similar process. So when you're dealing with the fenders and the sides of the car, you're generally dealing with the side view and the top view. When you're dealing with things like the windscreen, you're generally dealing with the front and the top. And when you're dealing with the back of the car, you're dealing with the back and the top generally. Now, there are differences depending on curvature, but uh, that's just the general process of what you get. Now, from here, we have this straight line we have the endpoints on that projection and we have the points here. We could project any of those, but I'm gonna just take the endpoints and use P to project those. And once again, just add those straight lines. Again, the main reason I'm doing this is for visual reference for the video, and it's not needed when you're doing this in, on your own, if you're just trying to create 3D curves. A vertical constraint works the same, but visually this helps, especially since these are hard to see through blueprints. Then I'm gonna take my spline. Once again, I'm gonna connect those points. I wanna minimize 
the curvature influence I have. So horizontal here, hit escape. And I'm gonna to start to pull this out. And we're not gonna perfectly match the shape. And the intent here is not for us to fully model this car anyways. You have to spend a lot of time planning these curves out, looking at reference images, and it's just not the intent of this video. So we're gonna approximate the shape. Again, we can always trim it back and build out this corner later as well. So you'll notice that I didn't turn on curvature combs here. I'm fairly confident in the shape because I only modified one handle. If you wanna turn those on and play with them, by all means, go ahead. Then once again, we're gonna create another curve on the side. We are going to do project include intersection, take the straight line there, the top down, and say OK. And then we'll hide the two previous curves that we use for the projection. Now, if we hide the canvas, we now have the upper edge of the fender, and then we've got the one that goes through the wheel well. So when we look at it from the front, this is essentially the shape that we're looking at. However, we need to tell it what's happening between here. And again, various years of these cars are going to look a little bit different. But what we're going to do is we're going to build out the curves at the back, at the front, and in the middle. Now, that's not necessarily required. So for example, if I was doing just the middle section of the car, the consistency of the curvature there means that I probably don't need to fully build out these guide curves. But for our purposes, because there is such a drastic change in curvature around the fender, around the wheel, I should say, and then at the front and the back, I think it's important that we understand how to build out these curves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a sketch. And we have to think about the geometry, how we're going to project this. Now, everything we've done so far, these points are vertical in relation to each other, which means that I could put a plane here. I could just put a vertical line here, and that could be portions of my projection. The problem that we're going to have with this is when we look at this from the top, this is going to be a straight line as well, and projecting those two straight lines together is just going to give us a straight line at an angle to connect those points. It doesn't really give us much. When we look at this from the front, we don't really have good visibility on what that curvature is. So here is where we really need to start to think about the shape, and we have to make some design decisions. So I'm going to start my sketch from the front, knowing that from the top or the side, it's just going to be a straight line. And then P on the keyboard, we're going to project just the end points. The end points are all we really need to hit. And then we're going to create a spline that goes between them. So at this point, we have to think about what we would expect the door to look like on this car based on where our handle is going to be. So I would imagine that at this point that we're going to assume that this line is vertical. And that's because the curvature is going to start to roll under here. And that means as we build out the curve below the door or below this midline, then we know that the tangency is going to be vertical at that point, at least at this edge. And then I'm going to roughly approximate what I think that the shape looks like. Then when we go to our side view, let's go ahead and create a new sketch. We're going to do the same thing, P on the keyboard and project these two points. And then all we need to do because we created them vertical relative to each other is just create a vertical line. Now, once more, we can create a third sketch. Doesn't matter what plane it is because all we're using this is to contain the projection. So we're gonna do an intersection curve to project these two out until they intersect. And then we can hide those two. So what we should have built is a curve that exactly touches those points. Now, the reason this is important is because when we go to do something like a surface loft, it's gonna be really picky about that curve being a guide. It's gonna to have to touch everything. So making sure that we take the time to add those constraints and build it out is gonna be important. Now, what we could do is we could leave this as is, but the front is sort of just doing its own thing. We haven't defined anything on the front yet. So if we want to define what happens at the front, we need to, once again, create a sketch on the front, P on the keyboard to project these two points, and then we want to build out our spline. And once again, I'm going to assume that this handle here is going to be vertical, and then I want to manipulate the geometry. Now we can do this either with just the handle that we added a vertical constraint to, or we can activate the upper handle. But remember, the less control that you have, or at least the fewer control tangency handles that you activate, the better your overall geometry is going to be. So the curvature comb is going to be much smoother if I don't enable that upper handle. 
So that's always what I strive for whenever possible. It's not always possible, but sometimes you can make it happen. Then for that front edge, once again, we'll do the same thing. P on the keyboard, project these two points, make a vertical line. Another thing that you could consider when doing this is anywhere that you're going to start building out your geometry, you can create a plane. And creating a plane will allow you to avoid making these extra straight handles. Uh, now, it's not always, again, it's not always possible, but in some cases, building those planes out at the points where you're going to divide up the body of whatever you're designing uh, can be a helpful process. So again, we're gonna create those. Now we should have a curve in 3D that attaches those points. I can hide the two previous curves. And you can see that we're starting to build out quite a few sketches. So it's always a good idea to rename these. So I'm gonna call this upper fender, and this is gonna be my mid fender. And this one is rear, and this one is front. Now obviously if we're just modeling the entire car, we would have hundreds of sketches, but we're only just doing this portion of the fender, so we're not really too worried about it. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna bring back the canvases, and I wanna build out one more guide curve. And to do this, I'm gonna create an offset plane. I'm gonna go ahead and view this from the side. And I wanna put it roughly in the middle of the wheel. So I might need to zoom in to get the resolution. That's close enough. And now I have a plane that I can sketch on. And what I wanna do now, and I'm gonna go ahead and hide the canvases because I'm just gonna approximate the shape, is I wanna to go to Project Include and Intersect. I wanna find the points where that plane intersects my spline. And the reason for that is because we need to attach to it. We, we need to know exactly where it is. So we're gonna to go to those two points. Once again, we're gonna give a vertical constraint to that handle, and then we're gonna to start to manipulate the shape. Now, remember that at this point, the fender is likely gonna bulge out a bit more because we have the wheel well. So we're gonna to have to just, once again, approximate. But now we don't need to project anything into 3D because we created a plane exactly where that curve needs to be, and we just attached it to our spline. Now, you could build out more curves if you wanted to really drive the shape of this. But in this case, we need to take a look at lofting. And we can either go from these small sections using the uh, upper and lower edges as guides, or we could go from the upper and lower edges, and these could be the, the lofting profiles, and then the rails or the three profiles would be then our guides, the rails that go in the middle of it. So that gives us the general shape that we're looking for. It looks pretty good. We could probably do a little bit of work up front, but that gives us the general shape of the fender. If we bring back the canvas, we look at this thing from the right. Essentially what we did was we built that upper portion. We look at it from the top. It should match the shape. If we look at it from the front, it should approximate the shape without the flare for the wheel well. So that's, Again, that's gonna be the general process of building out those curves in 3D. There's obviously a lot of nuances to this and it's very situational. It's very dependent on what you're modeling. But if you're trying to model a car, then the way that you go about it is just like we did. You build out your 2D sketches, you project them into 3D to build out those main defining lines for your curves. And once you have those main defining lines, you go back and you build different guides or rails to help control the geometry. Now, the difference between doing it from scratch like this and then building to the next level, let's say the bottom of the fender, the difference there is going to be that we want to use the edge of our fender to drive the curvature for the rest of it. Now, we can pick this up in, in future videos if this is something that's interesting, but the main point I wanted to get across was building out those curves in 3D. So if you have any questions on that, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.